Hello, good evening and welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm with me, Guru Mafinda. Now it's another lovely summer's evening and uh, we were predicted to get a storm or at least a decent lash of rain uh, yesterday but it never happened so uh, yeah we're still in the drought conditions. I've looked at the five day forecast and it's looking like Sunday we might get some rain. It's going to be a bit more overcast for the next few days but Sunday we might get some rain. So I'm going to have to water up again by hand outside. But having said that, I've got some more plants that I need to uh, to plant up and plant on. Especially the uh, Paris Island Cos lettuce, which if I don't watch out, it's going to turn into just a, a lettuce in itself. But it's not very good for it, that. We want to get some nutrition in it. We want to get it in the ground. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we're inside Tiki Tunnel 2, the Lady Farmer's Tiki Tunnel. I need to clear this out as well, all this detritus. But the lettuces that we planted in a couple of weeks ago, I actually took one the other day and we had it, we had it with us with a salad. But we've got these other lettuces here, which are just your iceberg lettuces. In fact, I think they might be butter leaf lettuces, these. Um, are doing fine, they're doing great. So why not try the cost lettuces as well? We've got some space. Any bit of space that I have got in here is going to be filled with a lettuce. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to have them about a foot apart, you know, about 12 inches, 30 centimetres apart, and dot them into here. I think that'll be a nice little home for them. Now I've just pulled a, a horse's tail out, and from the hole has erupted all those bloody ants. That's in there. We don't want them because they'll be farming aphids. So I'm going to have to deal with those in some way. Mm, I'll try and start by, by by washing them out, wetting them out, but I don't want to oversaturate the bloody uh, bed, you see. Right. Mm, ants. I may need to break the old uh, insecticide rule there. And put a bit of targeted insecticide down there for them. You know the gel, the sweet gel, and uh, we'll see if we can get rid of those because that's a bad, that's a bad situation. I don't want all those ants in the bed. Hmm. Yeah. So you do the best you can. We try and be as or fully organic as we possibly can on the little farmer's farm but it's all about actually producing food so we minimize the use of uh, of insecticides but we can't fully fully eliminate it somebody pointed out the other day that in the, and I have mentioned it before I've been open about it I've said that we do use it judiciously uh, in the form of slug pellets, so slug pellets we did put into the brassica bed, which is Bradley's cage. Now, no external wildlife in the form of uh, birds or hedgehogs can get inside there. And the slug pellets work fast on the slugs. So they'll eat the, they'll eat the pellet, and I've seen for myself that they only, they only tend to get a couple of feet and then die. Um, it's a pretty quick process with the slug pellets and, and they are effective, right? So it's effective. We're absolutely minimising the risk of any other creature getting uh, affected by the slug pellets. But yeah, open disclosure, we use slug pellets, but we only use them inside where no bird can get at them, etc. Under the net in here, they're not going to be, uh, they're not going to be able to get to it to get to the, uh, to the pellets and the slugs that have been affected by the pellets so yeah um, whatever works best in a judicial form now I don't use chemical um, for I don't put anything on the plants themselves nothing goes on the plants in the form of a chemical insecticide and we certainly don't use herbicides, we don't use weed killer, and we haven't used weed killer at all. That's why the place is overrun with flaming weeds, but that's that's a personal choice uh, for us. Yeah. Herbicides, insecticides, and pesticides. 
if you've got to use them, use them judicially or judiciously and uh, do the best you can. But the one year that we didn't use any slug pellets at all, we only got about 50% of the crops and they were bug bitten, they were sort of slug bitten, so you have to forgive us for that, I'm afraid, you know. The principal purpose of having the, having the growing is for food production, to eat the produce. So, um, yeah, I'm digressing there a little bit, aren't I? I've got to get those cos lettuces planted. So, because of the ant situation in there, my original plan was to put them in there. What I will do is utilise some of this space, so around the peas there, I can get six there. And then I'll have another six. So I may well put them on that side. Get them on that side underneath the tomatoes. Over there. Yeah. But in the cucumber bed, the, the ant issue is, uh, is one that I need to address and deal with. Okay. So over in uh, Tiki Tunnel 1, we've got the leaf curl issue. It's not as bad as it was since we applied the... Uh, the Epsom salt solution to it, to it, but we still have an issue that they're getting a bit crispy. But these ones that we took off as suckers from these very same plants, we took those as suckers um, about three weeks ago from those plants, are uh, uh, showing much vigour and a lot, and they're a lot greener. So I've taken one out that was that it just was gone beyond the realms of saving, and what I've done is. I've just prepared another little spot for it there, for this one, as a replacement plant. So all I'm going to do is take it out of its pot and put it into the impression that I've made with the uh, with the other pot. So you make yourself an impression like this. I've dampened the soil, uh, not saturated it, but dampened it. And then that's going to be going into there. I'll top off these now because they've not been topped off for three days. So I'm going to top those off with the water in this manner. Like this. In, in they go. In the snout goes. And then the subterranean watering is what we're after. Get that moisture into the soil. And that'll leach into the bed. And the tomato can then uh, can then find it. It can go and hunt it out. If you look at the water level there, it's dropping. That means that the holes that are in that bottle, that plastic bottle, are uh, leaching that water out and it's spreading within the bed. And it'll go out to about there. And then they've got the other one there. And it'll it'll con if I'd fill them all up, the six. Well, that'll mean that there's um, twelve liters of uh, water gone into the bed. And I'll do that every other day. But I'll check with my moisture meter, which has gone walkabout. I have got a moisture meter, but I'll check that and make sure that it's not getting too wet. You want it in the moist range, but you don't want it sopping wet. And then the roots can seek out that moisture. And, uh, and hopefully, it'll climb up, it'll climb up the cane that I'm going to put in. I'm going to put another cane in there, like I have with these ones. I'm letting them climb the canes rather than using these, these strings, because the strings as we know, rot off in the soil. So that was a failed experiment, but the canes work. And I'll tie those in with those little, uh, those little wire hoops. So that's what I'm going to do with him. But I'm going to set that sucker off, and I might well plant that on. See if it, uh, it turns into a plant, because it's a pity to waste that one. It's a nice one. Just uh, nip it out like that. And that should become another plant, because that one did. And then we'll have another clone. But uh, yeah, let's get this out of its pot and into its hole. I just thought I'd, sh I'd show you its root system. That's after a couple of weeks of... That went in as a branch. I'll get rid of him for the start. Little black fly. That went in as a, as a branch off from one of these. Just seeing if we've got any on. Yeah. Can you see it growing in the crook? There, there's the branch, and that, that 
coming out there is the spur. So I'm going to get him into the ground now. All you do is you just pop them in. I'll take that, that up as well, actually. Yeah, just nip, nip that off. And then pop him in there. And what we'll do then is we'll, we'll you know, lightly firm it in. And I'll give it a, I'll give it another washing. That's a matter as well do it now while, while you're watching. Sorry about the camera work. And that should wash down the compost and fill in, fill in any gaps. So um, the root ball will make contact with the compost. I'll top that off as well with some of the clover. And Bob's your uncle. Okay, so there's a bit of clover compost. A small handful of um, fine grade vermiculite. We've also got the pot that I've just taken that uh, that last plant out of. That's it, this fella. Who is now tied onto the cane, tied onto his cane. So we're going to see if we can do the same with his uh, with his offspring. So all I'm going to do with this, I'm not even going to put any rooting compound on it because I didn't with the other ones. All I'm going to do is fill up the pot with a fine vermiculite and clover compost mix like this. Um, I usually have a sharpie pen knocking about, I bet I have, I bet I have, you see, there's the sharpie, straight to the middle, down like that, couple of inches, get him, pop him in there, firm it around, see this is all it needs this, this is all we've done with the other ones. Fill it all up. And then what should happen is he'll get roots growing on him. And become a new plant. So that, actually well, let's take him now. Um, let's get a label. Right, so that one must be a super sweet 100 because that was the label that came out of it. So we'll stick that back in there. Sucker. Suckers. It's not the 21st of the 5th though. It's three weeks after that, roughly. Out he comes. We'll pull, put him in here with his little mates. I might stick it down there. Because these are getting dry now in here. So I'm going to top those up with a bit more water. Because that's how we're getting the leaf curled. These have got to go in. Those big ones at the back. They're yellow queen or golden queen or something like that. He's not, got the, he's not put the label in, Dave, but that's what they are, we're thinking. These are alicante. Yeah, I've got plenty of tomatoes. And if I don't use them, I'll just pass them on to somebody who will. But yeah. Yeah, plenty. There's, there's a sun gold sucker. What I might do is I might get them into buckets in here, because we did that last year as well. Uh, but some mixed results. It'll need a tidy up and another weed in here. It's the constant battle with the weeds, as you know, guys. But uh, that one's trimming as well. I'll trim that tonight. I'll have to get Joe down, see what his uh, his decision in his decisions are gonna be with these. Whether or not we just carry on trimming them because we're not getting any uh, grape. Any bunches of grapes on them. Can't see a single one. 
It happens. Some years they just rest. For the last three years it has produced grapes, but some years they just they just rest. They've had enough. So that might be what's going on here. I'll let um, the wise old elf make his pronouncements on these. Anyway, I'm digressing yet again. Let's get some water in here because that's all we're going to need for this little guy. Water from the base, by osmosis or whatever you call it, it'll uh, it'll come up the moisture and the roots will seek it out. I said before about these hers, the hers that are on the tomato plant. Uh, that cover the tomato plant really if you do this and you, and you plant off um, a cutting the roots will come out from uh, from the stem from where those hers are so there were eight four of the cells well three of the cells haven't sprouted anything and one of the one of the cost lettuces isn't uh, isn't too clever but anyway there we go some of them were clustered so I must have got a couple of uh, seeds in there's a couple of them with a couple of um, cost lettuces growing but it should be all right in there they'll have a liver they'll have a liver they'll die won't they but uh, yeah they've just been watered in now those like I said these lettuces are doing fine and dandy inside the bed them cukes are the, the remaining cukes are looking good as well. I think reducing the water in has helped and the foliar feed that we gave them with the Epsom salt solution in that. That seems to have greened them up all right, doesn't it? So they're not as yellow as they were. Oh, that's all right, they're looking nice though. And those tomato plants, there's two alicante there and the sun gold in the middle. And that was a sucker as well. That was a sun gold sucker. And we are getting tomatoes on to the established plants. So yeah, we're getting fruits on those. And there's certainly blossom coming on as well. But yeah, you just gotta keep an eye on those suckers. There's a sucker. I'm gonna get you, sucker. Because you want a single stem them, have a single stem going up the middle and then the fruiting uh, vines coming off from that. There's another sucker there coming out. Where is it? There, there it is. Growing in the crook between branch and stem. Growing in the crook between branch and stem. There's another one there. In the crook. These are coming on nice in here though, I'm quite proud of these ones. Tiny little bit of curl on them. So I might apply some more of the Epsom salt mix. But yeah, they're doing all right. Those peppers are a little bit wilty as well, but again, it's been very hot today. Those chilli peppers at the back, the basket of fire, are doing remarkably well, but they're getting a bit crowded out. So again, I'm gonna have to uh, watch what I'm doing in here. We are getting blossom, we may well get pepper too on these, but I think what I might well do is put them into the timber frame greenhouse at the top, which I'll show you now. Garlic's drying out all right, isn't it? Right. So that's the timber frame greenhouse that I built. And it's the four millimeter clear twin wall polycarbonate which comes in four foot by two feet sheets that's what we've actually clad it in there we've got the rain gutters to collect the water which go into the barrels at the end as well but here inside i've cleared it out now i may well invest in the application of another bag of clover compost just to top these beds off and then once they're topped off they can be prepared then to receive the pepper plants and the tomato plants. Now I might well have on this side the peppers along this side um, and then on this side which doesn't get as, quite as much direct sunlight is where I may well put the uh, 
the, the, the tomato plants. Now, the tomato plants, we're going we're gonna to be uh, putting six, trying to get six in. This is an eight foot by sort of 20 inch bed, which, is, which should be more than adequate really for, for getting six plants in. Run them up the canes again and affix the canes around here. So you've got a six foot run. And last, last time they actually grew across so I might then run strings across so that they can grow and fill in all the gaps and we'll have abundance. Because there's nothing wrong with that, bringing them across to here. And then having the, having the pepper plants, which don't grow as big, in here. But those uh, baskets of fire that we just looked at there, those monstrous bushes, I think I'm going to leave these in here. They seem to love it. They're thriving in here, these. Fingers crossed. So I'm going to leave these in here, give them a bit more space, get the... Um, the bell peppers out and these Corno di Toro Rosso out and into the greenhouse yeah some extreme plant close ups there guys but yeah it's good I just wish there were more I wish there was more time to devote to it at the moment though because I'm getting uh, a bit frustrated that I can't spend more time down here I am going to give it a full day on Saturday, but I'm not spending all week down here. It's not fair on the, um, on the wife and children, or on me, because I miss the wife and children when I, when I don't see them. And it's uh, not always possible for the, the good lady to get down here, as you know. Off with his head. Right then, boys and girls. If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. It's hurtling towards the weekend now, remember. If you're a lady, you've been beautiful, fragrant, and, uh, and as a rose. If you've been a gentleman, you've been strong, forthright, masculine, and virile, and vigorous, and all of that kind of good stuff. And if you've been something in between, you've been something in between. We're uh, going to leave you with that thought to ponder. We love you all. Take care of yourselves and each other, and... Uh, Let's take a look at our sign again. Keep growing with your heads down. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow night. Bye bye now boys and girls.